Today, we are going to look at an alternative consensus mechanism for cryptocurrencies called proof of stake. Now, to understand the reasoning behind proof of stake, let me first give you a brief crash course on proof of work and some of the problems that it has. So proof of work is where miners will have a bunch of GPUs, CPUs, or ASICs that are crunching a bunch of numbers to essentially verify crypto transactions. So this is a really good way to have a decentralized, secure payment system that is resilient to counterfeiting or just arbitrarily minting new coins, but it isn't without its flaws. So the problem that people are probably most familiar with at this point with proof of work crypto is the enormous resource consumptions that those various crypto networks have. So you've probably heard about Bitcoins, which is the worst one. Uh, Bitcoin's blockchain is using up more electricity every year than like the country of Norway, or you can see different countries listed here that the Bitcoin network uses more electricity than. Now, power consumption by itself, it really isn't too bad, but the real problem is how this electricity is produced. So Bitcoin, along with most other cryptocurrencies, has most of its mining done in China. And this is due to the fact that electricity in China is really cheap and really abundant. And it's also close to all of the electronic manufacturing that you would need. Those GPUs, CPUs, and ASICs, they can be sourced very cheap in China. A lot of the time they'll be made in China. Uh, so yeah, basically China is like a crypto miner's heaven, but it's hell for an environmentalist because China has some of the dirtiest energy production on the planet. About two thirds of China's electricity is produced by coal and China consumes almost five times as much coal as India, the second largest coal consumer on the planet. In fact, China actually consumes more coal than every other country combined by a small margin. Now, this should be alarming for any green-minded individual, but it's actually even worse than you realize. There is far fewer environmental regulations in China compared to Western countries like the United States or countries that are in the EU. And because of this, the extraction, refinement, and burning of the same volume of coal is going to be more harmful to the environment compared to those other countries. Then there's the problem of e-waste. Now, this tends to be a bigger problem for cryptos like Bitcoin um, that aren't ASIC resistant because there's no other use for a Bitcoin ASIC besides mining Bitcoin. Uh, and ASIC, in case you didn't know, stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. So it basically is a machine that can only have one use. You can't decommission an ASIC and then play video games with it or something. Uh, so when a newer, more efficient ASIC comes out, miners will typically throw their old ones into landfills. No one is going to buy an inefficient Bitcoin ASIC. Now, some cryptos like Chia, they actually brand themselves as green. This is a fairly new cryptocurrency that's hitting the market. Um, and they claim to not really contribute to the environment's destruction. But this really isn't true for Chia in its current form. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail about the problems with Chia because Der Bauer already covered this really well. Uh, so I will link his video in the description for you guys to go ahead and watch it. But TLDR, the plotting process for Chia actually requires enormous amounts of resources for it to be efficient. Basically, in order to be a Chia miner, you'll want to get a bunch of enterprise grade SSDs and raid them together. Or better yet, you want to have a RAM disk that is a couple terabytes in size and you need a strong CPU to do all of this plotting in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so, you know, if you try to use a consumer grade SSD, for example, to mine Chia, that drive is going to be totally destroyed from the plotting process within a month or two. Uh, so mining Chia that way, it actually has the potential to produce even more e-waste than Bitcoin with its ASICs because at least the mean time to failure for a Bitcoin ASIC is several years compared to a couple of months for consumer grade uh, SSDs with Chia. 
So this is where the proof of stake model comes in. So instead of the mining being done with massive warehouses full of computers to try and win some crypto, you instead stake some of the crypto that you have in order to earn more. Uh, so the way that staking works is slightly different for each crypto, but at a high level, you would deposit funds onto a network node, which is just any old computer that you connect to the internet, doesn't have to be special, doesn't have to have high-end hardware. And these nodes are then going to compete for an opportunity to forge a block, which is what the mining process is called in a proof of stake consensus. And of course, if you forge that block, then you will get rewarded with more of the cryptocurrency. And to increase your chances of getting chosen to forge that block, you would just want to stake more coins on your node, or if there's a limit to how many coins you can stake on a node, you can spin up more nodes to stake on. And also the longer that you've been staking for, the better your opportunity is for receiving the block reward. Uh, or for receiving um, the mining fees, like the um, transactional fees that different cryptos use. But again, all of the different proof of stake coins have slightly different rules and metas to them. Like Ethereum 2.0, for example, it requires you to lock up to 32F on a node. Uh, now there are protections put in place to prevent sabotage. Um, so like if nodes are trying to do things like double spend or anything else that's considered harmful to the network, then they will usually receive a penalty. And this penalty could result in you losing all of the crypto that you staked on that node. Uh, and in the case of Ethereum, 32F would be just over $100,000 right now. So that's basically how they try to prevent uh, any nonsense from occurring on a proof of stake network. Um, now these penalties, they do create a new problem for miners because if your node is just misconfigured in some way, so let's say you're not trying to be malicious, you just did it wrong, uh, or if your node were to disconnect from the network, which might not even be your fault, then you could be penalized for those things as well. So if you're going to run your own node, you really have to be tech savvy so that you don't lose your stake. Um, but companies like Coinbase, they're already um, basically offering staking as a service. So they will take care of all the technical details. You just commit some coin. And of course, they take some of the profit for providing that service to you. So proof of stake, it sounds like it's the consensus solution that crypto needs. There's no environmental impact because all the mining or forging in this case is done digitally. Uh, but there is some criticisms out there floating around for proof of stake. So one of the more common ones that I hear, um, which I don't really consider to be that legitimate of a criticism, is just that it's a rich man's game. So the more money you have, uh, the more you're going to earn with proof of stake because you can just stake several people's net worth in various uh, cryptos, right? Now, this is true for proof of stake. Uh, obviously, if I have $1 million worth of stakeable crypto, I could just stake it and I can probably also afford good hardware and a network with five nines or better uptime. Um, so yeah, essentially the rich do get richer, but this is true for any financial system. Rich people are gonna do better in the stock market. Rich people are gonna do better with other cryptos because they could just buy a bunch and hold it to sell it later. Uh, rich people can make more money with gold. Rich people can make more money flipping sneakers or even just letting that money sit in a high interest savings account. Um, you know, you're obviously going to make more money uh, doing that with $1 million than with $1,000. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a topic for a different, uh, different conversation, right? Like if we're talking about any type of crypto, the whole like rich get richer, like, yeah, that's obvious for any financial system. Um, so the real problem that I see with proof of stake comes from its lack of security. So there's this thing called a long range attack that you can do on proof of stake consensus and pretty much no coin out there right now that does proof of stake is impervious to this attack. Um, because of another problem that proof of stake coins face called weak subjectivity. So when new nodes come online to a proof of stake network, they are provided with the Genesis block. And this is the only block that all nodes are going to accept as the first one. 
and new nodes will also be presented with all of the published branches of that blockchain. And unfortunately, there's really no way for a new node to tell which one is the main chain without just trusting someone to tell them like, yeah, it's actually this one, uh, which obviously hurts the whole decentralized concept because then you have a trusted person that's telling you what the legit blockchain is. Uh, and the same also would apply to a node that has been offline for a period of time, say, you know, several months. They're not going to know which chain is the legit one either. Now, technically, someone could fork a blockchain, even in a proof of work consensus. But the only way to pull that off is to have a 51% of the hashing power on a proof of work network. Um, you know, there's no computational requirement to fork a chain in proof of stake. You can just generate the blockchain, you know, on your own in a matter of minutes. Uh, it's also possible to pull off this attack without hurting yourself too much financially. So, you know, we talked about earlier how normally if you do something like this, you will get a penalty and you could lose um, your stake. But let's say that if somebody wants to fork the proof of stake chain, they could bribe some of the initial validators who might not even be staking anymore for their private keys, uh, which those initial stakers, if they've already pulled their stake out, if they've already cashed out their coins, they have no financial incentive to protect themselves because they're not actually risking anything. Uh, so they could give these to the hacker and now they're able to fork the blockchain and even use past validators keys to validate those past blocks as well. Um, now, long range attacks, they are a little bit more complicated than what I'm describing here. So I'm going to link uh, this article that you see on screen now in the description as well so that you can read up more about how uh, long range attacks work. So there are some problems with proof of stake, but it looks like it is going to end up being like the consensus model for cryptos um, or some form of it is going to be in the consensus model for future crypto. So Ethereum is already planned to switch to proof of stake in 2022. So there you're going to have the second biggest crypto switching to it. Uh, if F doesn't tank, then the devs of other cryptos might feel more confident to switch to proof of stake. Uh, the problems around proof of stake, they also seem to be easier to solve to me. Now, they are alarming, right? Because if um, it's not very secure, then that ends up being a problem. But the problems with proof of stake are basically digital problems. And the pollution caused by mining and proof of work is more of a geopolitical problem. So China, they're probably never going to switch to clean electricity production until it's in their financial interest to do so. Um, you can just take a look at all the red tape and all the like protests and fines and all of that stuff that Western countries are facing for using coal. And yet they still use it for like 10 to 25 percent of their electricity production. Um, and yeah, China is obviously very far removed from this because they don't really pay attention to fines and protests and things like that uh, to the same degree that Western countries might. But these are just my thoughts on the proof of stake consensus model. Let me know yours in the comments below. And thanks for watching.